it was apparent that the real drama of the day was to be at Main Road, Manchester. It had to be a fight to the death, as commentator John Motson explains. It's do or die at Main Road today. Manchester City's loyal supporters know that a draw will be enough to preserve the First Division status that they've enjoyed for 17 years. While the Luton fans know their team must go for a win. They remember it was against City that Luton's last First Division campaign ended eight years ago. And indeed, it was Dennis Stewart who got City's goal that day in a 1-1 draw. Stewart keeps his place today as John Benson retains the side which won at Brighton. Steve Kinsey is substitute and captain Paul Power makes his 250th league appearance. Indeed, he's one of seven players in the side who took part in the FA Cup final replay against Spurs exactly two years ago. How times change. And David Pleat, meantime, calls this Luton's Cup final. He has Paul Elliott back in defence after suspension and he banks on a midfield of Hill, Horton and Donaghy, which did well when Luton beat City in December. With David Moss still injured, Fleet takes a gamble on Brian Steen, who has started only one league match in the last five months and whose foot injury has restricted him to 19 First Division games in which he has claimed 15 goals. What a tense day for the two managers. David Fleet there, the Luton Town boss, shaking hands with his opposite number, John Benson. What a nice touch when both men, and indeed possibly their futures, are balanced on a knife edge. And the referee on a day when there's so much at stake is Arnold Challoner of Maltby in South Yorkshire. Luton to kick off in the orange shirts. A week ago, they didn't believe it was possible for them to find themselves in this position. Whereas City in blue, with Asa Hartford on the ball, have been told that lots of futures could depend on their result here today. Here's Ray Ranson. And Gordon came to meet Dennis Stewart and took it very cleanly. A test there as Ranson crossed for the goalkeeper on loan as Stewart challenged him. McDonald. a header by Stevens. what a good one it was too. Donaghy on to Aylott. Aylott to Steen. Horton. Steen. Oh, he went rather nicely round power and they're all up there. And now Donaghy and Aylott are going to be a problem in the air. Donaghy took them away and Aylott supporting him. Header was by Donaghy. Turner intercepting from Baker. Who got back. That was Bond. And then it was Tuart. Aylock for Luton. Hill is to his left. Good tackle by McDonald. Finds power. He has Tommy Caton coming up outside him. And there are four the other way now for City. Bond. In early. Reeves. Steen's made a run, so has uh, Reed there to cover. And John Benson with the grey hair, arms folded. Goodness knows how he must feel today. Aylott did well. Forced the corner.
and it was played short, intending to find Goodyear. Here's Stevens. They're still all forward, though, Luton. Steen is up there. So too was Donaghy. Aylott's in. Oh, and a great save by Williams, but the referee already pointed the other way. There was an infringement there by Aylott, but the young goalkeeper reacting just in case, as he had to do. Walsh, Donaghy. Oof, power caught him, but play on to the referee. A good advantage played. Stevens put the ball in. Williams came superbly to meet Aylott. And the two players who were involved in the midfield collision are both hurt. That's poor power for Manchester City, their captain. And for Luton, Mal Donaghy. Baker now for City. Reeves over on the right is unmarked. And Godden happy to see that ball drop over. No more so than the Luton bench and indeed City because two players require attention. Now Alex Williams came there for what, by any standards on a day like this, was a testing ball for a goalkeeper. But he responded well against the challenge of Aylott. Both players back on their feet. But power is limping. It's a good ball to Hill. Aylott is there too. And so now is Stevens. Aylott's coming in with Tommy Caton marking him successfully and to it that's a good ball to Bond and that might be for Reeves what a superb switch in play by City but is there anybody with the legs to get up front to it's trying Reeves had to hold on there was nobody in the center when he wanted to cross the ball first off power there are now McDonald and to it starts another run and the legs of Goodyear there for Luton in goes Reeves Reeves, Baker, Power, and the crowd get behind City. McDonald, no good. Well, that was a delightful move by Manchester City. Dennis Stewart played the first ball across the midfield to Kevin Bond, and he released a beauty into the path of Kevin Reeves. There's not much between the two sides in the league table and there's not much between them on the pitch this afternoon so far. Reeves, there might be now. A long ball delivered by Nicky Reed, getting Kevin Reeves in behind the Luton defence. The angle was never very good for him, but it was a good attempt. We're no further forward, in a sense, than we were at the start. The first half in which the team shared the play generally, although City came very strong in the last ten minutes. And the half-time score, if it was to be the full-time score, would favour them and not Luton. So, City start the second half. Playing now from the left, here's Baker. City have conceded in the first division 69 goals this season, and Luton 84. A lot. Horton for Luton. Steen, now has he got the ability to turn? Walsh, same could be asked of him. Couldn't get past Ransom. Donaghy. 
Alos, Horton, wide it'll go to Stevens. Driven low. Oh, it came off Bond. Corner. Well, what an awful day it would be to concede an own goal. Donaghy with the header. And the turn by Walsh and a fine save by Williams. But it's back in again, offside. Well, Donaghy won the header from the corner and Walsh had the chance to spin and shoot and Alex Williams makes the sort of important save that we saw from him last week against Brighton and Jimmy Case. Certain now that Luton are going to use their substitute. They're going to bring off Wayne Turner and replace him with Raddy Antish. Turner, more of a defender, Antish, who is able, with his extravagant skills, to occasionally conjure something in the way of a telling pass or shot. Come on, keep it going! Oh. Oh. Come on, Raddy! Forward by Goodyear. That's Steen with Reed. Halfway through the second half. Manchester City nil, Luton nil. Reed for City to power. And the main road roar rises again as City have three waiting in the centre for a cross. One of them is Baker. Trying to get by Donaghy. And it was Donaghy who was penalised. Free kick to City. to take oh Caton got the header back in McDonald couldn't finish it Gordon's initial clearance wasn't quite good enough Caton headed it back in but McDonald couldn't get there and they're still lined up in the penalty area Bond Reeves is there McDonald to it fine save by Tony Gordon desperate stuff to be. And the City fans giving the team the sort of backing that Chairman Peter Swales appealed for. It could make so much difference for them as they press strongly. Hartford with the corner. McDonald's up again, flags up, the flags up, and the referee has spotted there was a little bit of pushing. But when those corners and free kicks come in, Bobby McDonald, he's not the tallest player in the world, but he's always a threat. Just look at the animated gestures now on the Luton bench. David Pleat must feel that they were slightly fortunate to survive the last couple of minutes. John Sheridan smokes his pipe. But Tony Godden there, maybe not altogether orthodox and not altogether convincing the first time, but he certainly made two very important saves. City, but Luton have still got something left. Donaghy. A lot is calling and making a run. Here's Horton. Why did him is Kirk Stevens? That's his effort. Oh, it's come off Reed on the crossbar. Could you believe that? Driven back in by Stevens and Steen couldn't get there. It's a corner to Luton. Now suddenly the emphasis switches. One moment it was the Luton goal that was under siege. Now it's City as Antiche prepares to take the corner. Not a very good one by his standards. Well, City there know just how lucky they were to survive. 
Nicky Reid will have nightmares about that moment, but nothing like as many times as he would have done if the ball had gone in. Hartford. Baker is coming in from this side, it's still Hartford. And it's still Hartford. Oh, he's beaten them all. And he's backheeled it. And power curls one for Stewart. you need from your experienced players in a match like this. The back heel set power up. There was a man on the line, so to it couldn't have been offside. Walsh. And Luton aren't finished by any means. Was Ransom fouled by Walsh? Linesman and referees say no. Luton have a corner. Just over six minutes to go. And Donaghy is at the back, and Caton clears. Again, City felt they might have had a free kick. Again, the referee ignored the appeals. Donaghy is up again, he's so dangerous. Aylott's there! Can he get his shot in? He can't. What a scramble, and Reeves glad to get the ball away. Defenders had no idea for a minute where it was. Aylott just couldn't get his shot in. And Luton, as they have to do, are pushing everybody up. They've got to leave gaps now at the back. Goodyear. Looking for Aylott. Elliott is forward, so is Ricky Hill. Tommy Caton with the clearance. Five minutes left, and Horton's pass intercepted by Baker. And he didn't get a good touch on the ball. Aylock got it instead. Steen drove it low against Caton. And Steen again. And he gets the cross in. And Williams has come. And Tish! Oh, it's there! They've done it! Ready and Tish! couldn't do anything about it and when it came out and Tisha's shot it arrowed through a crowd of players and the men on the line couldn't keep it out City now are on the rack as Horton takes the free kick for Walsh and City let him go Peter Swales holds his head. His club are only a couple of minutes away from Division 2. It's just a question of whether Luton can hang on or whether City can salvage something at the 11th hour of this 42-match season. The crowd are doing all they can to help. Reeves, power, it's awkward. But Donaghy jumps with Stewart and Reed.
and now it's Ransom. And Reeves is coming in on the cross, it's down to Godden. Corner. John Benson on the city bench could surely hardly bear to watch, but I shouldn't think David Pleat can either. City have a corner in the last minute. And McDonald with Godden and Kinsey. The referee's pointing the other way. He's penalised a City player. But just for a minute, their substitute almost did for City what Antich did for Luton. But the whistle had gone. The crowd is 42,000, which is some attendance. The second best of the season at Main Road. But are they watching City go down? Hill. Brian Horton had to put his foot in. Antich, oh, what a bad ball, but there was an offside anyway against Steen. And Kirk Stevens trying to hang on. Oh, dear me. Well, desperation isn't a strong enough word at the moment. We are in stoppage time, and Luton lead 1-0, and look like keeping their place in the first division, and City look like being relegated. And the header out was by Alot, which is just insurance, really, because they'll be asking the referee, Luton, how much longer he's going to add on. Forward by Caton. Bond, Kinsey. And that's it! Luton Town have survived! David Pleat on the pitch! He's kept them up! What an amazing act of escapology here by Luton. But as they celebrate... Manchester City, one of the most accomplished clubs of a few years ago, are relegated. They go down before their own supporters to a goal by Raddy Antich, the Yugoslav whose future at Luton has been in doubt all season, whose contribution has been fitful at times, but who has scored a goal which has made history for his club. What an amazing match for David Pleat. The goal came in the 86th minute. His team were four minutes and a bit of stoppage time away from relegation. City were that close to survival. And Antich scored the goal, which keeps Luton up for another year at least, gives them some breathing space, delights their fans, will please many people in football for the spirit in which they've played this season. But you have to feel sorry on a day like this for Manchester City, whose 17-year unbroken run in the first division has come to an end on their own main road ground. Well, I'm sure many of us do feel sorry for City. They couldn't have tried harder in that game, but if it's any consolation to them, in their 17 years at the top, 15 of the clubs in next season's first division have gone down in that time, including Manchester United, Aston Villa, Nottingham Forest and Spurs. And it hasn't been the end of the world for them. They've all bounced back to greater glories. And Chairman Peter Swales is the man under pressure, and there were minor demonstrations afterwards. But it would be good to see all that energy harnessed and used positively to recreate better days. But it was Luton's day, like a cup final, perhaps more so. They've won admirers this season for their enterprising and attractive style, though hardly enough points. But finally they triumphed and John Motson conducted the celebrations. Well, it's normally a cup final day when we get a team together like this, but I think, uh, Brian, for Luton, <laughs> for Luton Town, Brian, um, this was a cup final, wasn't it? It certainly was, John, yeah, and I think uh, more than a cup final because <laughs> for next season, some of the younger lads, it's going to be tremendous for them to stay in the first division. It's the only place to play, John, really, and I'm, I'm really pleased for them. Now, Kirk, there must have been a feeling with, what, 86 minutes gone that the game was up and that nil-nil was going to send you down. <laughs> no, no, the lads were confident that I'd pop up and do a bit for them. <laughs> and then they had to leave it with Raddy. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, let's speak to the man that scored. Raddy, when you went on, what did David Pleat say to you? Well, uh, you know what I have to do. My, uh, <coughs> my only mind was uh, score. Uh, score winner, <laughs> yeah. Oh. And, uh, oh. and the day I did, yeah. <laughs> 
let's have a word with Brian Steen, who actually laid the goal on. Yeah. Brian, yeah. your first, uh, only one league match for, for five months before today. How much of a gamble was it that you played at all? Well, it's, a, it's a big risk, and the physio decided to take the risk in the end. Uh, it was me and Mossy injured. And uh, now it's just, I had a painkiller in it before the game, but now it's murder, really. Like, you know, but I'm just glad I've come through it, OK? And what about the cross that led to the goal? Well, I got two bites at it, and uh, uh, I think the I think the left bank just sold himself, and it just gave me enough room to put the cross over. It's difficult to reflect on a game like that. But how did you feel? What with five minutes to go and nil nil? <laughs> I think, I think uh, sometimes, John, the most inspired thing you can do on the bench is hope. And I was hoping and praying. And I think at the end of the day, the lads have been smiled upon. But I, I do believe they deserve to be smiled upon because I think that this season they've gone into the first division, many of them young players. You know, only Brian Horton has played regularly in the first division before. And for the other players to go in the first division and try to take the game to other teams. And in the process, we've suffered. We've had some horrible results. We've had some horrible home results. But at the end of the day, they've come through it. And if there's justice, I just feel sad that it happened to be a game which was so crucial to two teams, so the other team has to go. Maybe they would have been just as sad for us. I would have rather, if we won here, we put someone else down elsewhere. But I'm... I just feel that every player has worked hard. Why I'm popular, I'll tell you that, because in training, they put the ball through my legs regularly, and it's easy for them, and I think that's good. Well, I think, I, I think uh, the one thing that is certain, David, is that when they put it through your legs next season, it'll still be as a First Division club. Congratulations to you and to all the squad, those that didn't play today as well. We look forward to seeing you in the First Division again next season. Yeah.